I got a question today that made me think of you. This might be helpful for you, but the question came from Christian, who's a member of my virtual studio, and he was asking about some of the material we're working on this month. Bob, is it okay if I mix working on more beginner-oriented stuff, such as major scales, with more advanced stuff, such as transcribing, even though that's beyond me right now? And the short answer is yes. It's definitely okay, but I wanted to really dig into the more like beginner and advanced part here and, and just talk a little bit about my process with when it comes to practicing. And I dug out my trusty 60 BPM t-shirt because I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through that a little bit. So here's the deal in short, whether it's a major scale or a piece of a wild Chris Potter transcription or you know a set of complicated chord changes or a set of simple chord changes, it almost doesn't matter. It's not about it's not so much about the what, but my I lean heavily on the on the how I go about doing things to help me you know get the control and the fluency I want in the most efficient manner possible. Um, so here's the here's the deal. I'll, I'll play a little thing that I was working on today and this is like an example of something where I'll come in to start practicing and I'll just play a little bit until something sort of presents itself because I don't really need these, but um, maybe some long tones and then some chromatic stuff. I mean, it's not, it's not anything, it's not rocket science, okay? But uh, then I will find something, I might play my way into something, okay? It's uh, abstract, but this is the thing that I came up with. The speed was just just to show you like where I'm headed with it, but speed is not the goal. In fact, the way I'm gonna practice it is the opposite. And how I wanna tie this together to Christian's question is that whether it's that thing that I just played, that riff, lick, whatever, or it's a C major scale, I'm gonna do this process pretty much identically. And the idea is this, um, you know, and look, we could talk about that line that I just played and what it is and oh, it could fit over C, uh, excuse me, B flat minor concert, E flat seven, like a, a concert two, five, one and A flat and how it has enclosures and so on and so forth. That stuff's very easy to put on paper and talk about, put on a blackboard and talk about. It's less easy to talk about rhythm or maybe rhythm is not the word I'm searching for here, but feel, time feel. That is more nuanced and definitely not something that you're going to get a feel for, no pun intended, by, by reading just about anything. You're gonna get it from, by listening and doing. And so the doing part here is repetition, 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 repetition. So I'm gonna take this idea and rather than concerning myself with putting it through 12 keys or something, not that there's anything wrong with that, uh, I'm just gonna keep repeating the darn thing over and over because each time I do it, I will get more comfortable and thus more relaxed. And like when you see a movie for the third time, you notice things you didn't notice the first time. Ah, oh, hell. I done introduced him enough. With them all for collective action. This will not stand. This will not stand this aggression against uh, Kuwait. Right? At least I do. So I'll put the metronome at 60, and I'm gonna do this a few different ways. The first is, and by the way, all this is legato because legato allows me to measure the distance between any two notes. Is that air conditioning gonna to be too loud? All right, if I were tonguing, it would screw the whole thing up. So legato, slow, straight, or even, and slurred. Three S's, slow, straight, slurred. 16th notes, first, think them. One E and a two E and a three E and a pa 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 See, already I'm defining that space in between the clicks. That felt pretty good. Let's now take it to half notes and check it out. So one and two and three and almost 
out of breath there. All right, but now I'm starting doing that, I start to notice like certain notes feel a little bit more pushed than others. So I would, I would do that one for a little while. That's a good one. Eighth notes at 60, that's kind of like a great place to be to work on stuff. And what I mean here is like, now it's a lick, but let's say it was a, a C major scale. Okay, same measurement principles apply, meaning I can still focus on the how I'm delivering each note in time. So now let's do it at the real holy grail here with when it comes to 60, legato quarter notes, legato quarter notes. Three and four. It's a little more tedious, but I don't know if you noticed when I went to that F sharp, it was early. I jumped down to that note early. Also, my reed is like super dry now. Okay, but same thing though. If I were doing a major scale, I'm doing a A flat major scale. In four notes, one note was late, one note was early, another one was late. Boom, right there. It's, it's all there for me if I just am listening those quarter notes were sloppy. So it, it doesn't, like a major scale doesn't mean beginner, you know, and a, an advanced piece of vocabulary doesn't necessarily mean advanced. If you're playing them both as slow as I'm talking about, what's the difference? And by playing stuff that slow, you know, or, or I should say working my way down to that slow, it takes time, it's not an overnight thing, no, nothing is, but over time, I'm just evening out the whole chromatic, range of the horn. So like whether it's low or high or what key it's in will matter far less because I'm not playing anything faster in an easy key and slower in a hard key, anything like that. I'm just keeping it all right there. So it's a great workout. And if it was like, a, like I don't know, a while back I was doing some videos about that crazy Chris Potter solo. Similarly, I would work on it this way. I would get it, you know, roughly where it is. I would do about half that speed and then Parts of it, I would do half that speed again. And over time, it just builds like this ability to really have a good clean technique, push the buttons down exactly where and when I, I mean to. And then, um, you know, I'll take this line and maybe put it with like here, I've got a drum loop and now I've, I've worked on it with the metronome very even, slow, straight and slurred so that I know that I can deliver each note evenly with the click. Now I can focus on the feel of it in another context. So here's a swing loop. One. Two. This is a long count in one, two, a one, two, three. focus on more of the nuances. You hear how I'm sort of ghosting certain notes and the dynamics are changing and some notes I'm kind of gliding into or, or hitting just a little bit or maybe half opening the key, the E flats, things of that nature. Again, each time I go around, I can, I can focus on a new part of it because I'm not having to tax my brain with what should I play next, you know? That's, that's where I find this good. I did this recently with like a, a longer stretch of ideas that I had sort of unwittingly worked out, unwittingly worked out over, I was, my intent was to work on the song, um, uh, I also wanna say there is no greater love. There will, another, there will never be another you. I was practicing that, kind of came up with a little bit of a piece of vocabulary. If I have the recording, I'll stick it in this video. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
And I just sat with that one idea, you know, with the drum loop and really focused on the feel. And by doing that, it's great. It's like a nice way to, to shed that kind of gets you in a zone. I should say gets me in a zone. And um, I have to remind myself of that sometimes, especially when I'm, you know, struggling to just to start practicing and feeling overwhelmed by options. Picking one thing like that and just doing it over and over and over again, but not mindlessly, like with some thought about this particular element, the feel, the delivery. I can get so much out of it. So whether it be a C major scale or a more advanced longer piece of vocabulary vocabulary you know I'm, I'm working on a real clean and efficient technique i'm working on a, um, that connection between external and internal music like what i hear outwardly and inwardly so right that's what i'm trying to make come out through here but i have that in here too it becomes a technical workout. It's a vocabulary thing. It's, I love these things where it's it's lots of things at once if you're paying attention, right? So, you know, there, there it is. Advanced or beginner, I don't know. Um, I just try to go slow. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 